Hey guys, I want to welcome you to another closer look video. Again, big shout out to Zero Nazarak for inspiring me to kind of do a similar series that, you know, he does. In fact, he just recently did one on some of the other Transformer animated projects that came out, you know, came out afterwards, especially later on in the late 90s, early 2000s, and, and mid 2000s. So, I decided to kind of do something similar. Like I've said, I, of course, did an updated closer look at the various Transformer um, you know movies that I have basically various versions of the 86 movie and I think I even did one about last year late last year on my 4k GoPro um, using my uh, cap cam if you are the cap accessory basically uh, this which you know you can attach to your hat and you can wear it like that so and a long story short, um, I think I did a closer look on that, and I may do another closer look at not just it, but all the other uh, Sonic-related um, media that I have physically uh, available. But um, you know that might come real soon, so keep an eye on that, uh, eye out for that. But of course, recently I just did a huge one in a closer look at the entire. Hanna-Barbera collection that I have with the exception of the Jetsons and uh, Jude in uh, Rocking with Judy Jetson, but I'll probably get into that later on as well. Uh, but I wanted to come on here because like I said at the end of the other video, I wanted to do a closer look at what I consider some rarities. And what these rarities are basically are a series and things that we have yet to see uh, released uh, on physical media and some of them we may never see released on physical media due to certain reasons. So I wanted to take this opportunity to do that. Now there are some of these that you can find exclusively here on YouTube and other places but mostly here on YouTube because they have YouTube channels. And uh, you get to kind of check out not just what the original source that they're based on but also the spin-off that they did later on. But with that said this is not just going to be you know looking at you know these various you know, um, you know, various rarities and all that, but there's going to be some rarities in there that, you know, on their own would never be released. You know, they wouldn't get a singular release physically. So, with that said, let's go on down to the table and take a closer look at these rarities, if you will, of the unofficial kind for the time being. Hey guys. I'm going to, like I said, back here with, um, as I said at the beginning, a closer look, and again, shout out to Sarah Nazarak for inspiring me to do this, a closer look at the rarities of that I owned physically. And a lot of these rarities are basically things that um, normally you wouldn't see on DVD or have yet to officially get a DVD release of any kind, and some of them, like I said, due to copyright reasons, wouldn't even be considered uh, for a DVD release or even a Blu-ray release of any kind or even a streaming release uh, due to, um, like I said, copyright issues. So, first of all, I'm going to start off with a few things I have here. These are things that I actually recorded off, uh, not recorded, but I downloaded, believe it or not, off YouTube. Yeah, YouTube actually had these up there several, on separate occasions. I don't know if they're still up there. And I used uh, DVD Fab a few years ago. I think this is right before we uh, moved. I'm not really sure. I have to look at them. But I think this is right before we moved. Yeah, it was right before we moved because if I look at the date, because I sent Zara Nizarak copies of these, um, you know, it was right before we moved from Patterson to Newman that I did, did all this because, again, these were on YouTube. And again, I'm not really sure if they're on YouTube or not but as far as I know some of these things here don't have a physical release or any kind of release whatsoever so the first one we're going to look at is right here this is um, the ABC Saturday Superstar movies ABC Saturday Superstar movies just in case you guys are wondering what those are um, as we zoom in a little bit on this so you guys get a, better, get a better look the the Superstar movies were basically an hour long, about 45 minutes to an hour long, maybe an hour and a half, but mostly 45 minutes to, you know, to an hour long uh, specials 
uh, that came out in the 1970s, uh, early 80s, but got replaced in the late 70s, uh, mid to late 70s, I think. Um, yeah, I think it was the mid to late 70s. They got replaced by the weekend special with OG Remor. So it got replaced by that. But this was something that they did back at that time frame as well because, you know, these were things that, you know, you see, weekend special like CBS Story Break were based more on, you know, animated or live action adaptations of books and everything. Like, you know, if it was still going on today, and I just dropped my rarity figure there. If it was still going on today and let's say Disney wanted to bring out the week bring back the weekend special, they could do that. Or if CBS wanted to bring back Story Break, they could do that. It'd be like if they wanted to adapt Mouse Watch here uh, into an animated uh, special to, you know, kind of, you know, bring it to life. Uh, you know, to kind of finally, like, bring it to visual life for everybody to see. And that's what Weekend Special and CBS Story Break were about. So, before that, ABC, and I think CBS also had this uh, something similar as well, they had the Superstar movies, which were mostly, like I said, animated 45 minutes to an hour uh, long specials that were not, you know, just based on books or anything. They were actually based on already established IPs. So here we have on this one uh, a variety of stuff. This is Rose Petal Place and Rose Petal Place uh, Real Friends. This was actually uh, a series, a franchise that they tried to do um, and they tried to get it over with um, ABC Saturday Superstar Movies and I think Weekend Special. Then here we have um, The Mini Monsters. The Mini Monsters was a, a new series that they tried to bring out where you saw mini versions of the Monster Kids and along with some human friends trying to start a band or something. Then here we have uh, Nanny and the Professor. It's also on here. And uh, I can't think of the other one right there. It's a uh, friend or something like that. A true fr friend. Uh, basically, these were like around the end of the... Now, some of these were around the end of the Superstars movie run. And in between that and the weekend special. Like these here were weekend specials. And the rest of these here were... Uh, superstar movies, at least at the tail end of it, anyway. And like I said, I found these on YouTube. I don't know if you can still find them on YouTube, but if you can, I would recommend checking them out and maybe even going and downloading them uh, through various websites like UT to uh, like YT to MP3 uh, or the YT download or whatever which ones you can trust or you feel more comfortable with. Uh, you can do that, and you'll be able to put them onto DVD if you want to. But those were the Again, some of these, like Rose Petal Place, was like in the weekend morning spe weekend special deal. And um, these here are like to add, right in between them, like in between the weekend special era, the beginning of the weekend special era, and um, the you know end of the superstar uh, uh, Saturday superstar movie era. So pretty good, nice collection to have. Again, you can probably still find them on YouTube, but we'll have to see. This one up here is another one I did. It's got a little bit more pack, a little bit more uh, inside of it, um, if you will. So here, on this one, we have, and uh, these are mostly around 1972, 1973, and everything. Just want to make sure uh, I did a lot of them here. Um, but here we have Daffy Duck meets the Groovy Ghoulies. Now they've actually gone and tried to remaster this special several times by incorporating some of the uh, shots in there, the animated shots. Like one of the more uh, lost portions of the special that's been found and they're trying to reincorporate it into a remastered version, which, it, you know, this is the one that, one of them that has it, has that lost. Um, um, that la that lost um, scene in the special is when they go to Mirrorland. It's when you got Drac and Wolfie and Frankie going to the live action realm of Mirrorland 
And that, for some reason, got cut out, you know, out of a lot of uh, reruns of the special. And over time, they got redis it got rediscovered, and a lot of people have been trying to insert it back into the special. So this is one of them that has it inserted. It's kind of like off-putting a little bit because it goes from color to black and white when it gets to that part. And, you know, again, you know, they're, they're trying to, you know, restructure it, reconstructure it, if you will. And it's one of those situations, honestly, uh, to where uh, hold on for a sec. But like I said, it's um, it's one of those situations to where uh, basically it's a special that unfortunately Warner Brothers has not done anything to um, distribute physically or even streaming wise. Um, basically, it's a because basically it's a crossover between the characters of Daffy, Porky, Petunia, Sylvester, Foghorn, and you know all of them, and the filmation characters of the Groovy Ghoulies, and they have yet to like I said because of the because filmation is currently owned the classic media of, along with Groovy Ghoulies is owned by Universal. There's been no uh, compromise whatsoever, even before that, to get this out on physical media or even streaming media, because of the ownership, you know, different because of the ownership of characters between the different uh, companies. So yeah, this is a rarity special that you know you can find on YouTube, but it's one of those situations to where you gotta make sure that if you want the full context of it, make sure that the time is a lot longer than let's say. 43, 45 minutes or something like that because the live action sequence in there, like like I said, that kind of cut out in future airings, you know, a lot of people that have been trying to reconstruct the special, uh, you know, they, uh, they've been trying to reinsert it into that um, Pacific moment towards the end of it. So, you know, I'll give them credit on that. Uh, the next one we have on here is Gidget Makes a Wrong Turn. And I think Gidget Come Over. So we've got two Gidget specials. They were based on the Gidget live action character. Uh, that if you're a Fox Glove fan on Rescue Rangers, you know was, um, I think, portrayed by Deborah Wally. And then, of course, we have Popeye Meets the Man Who Hated Laughter. And that was a crossover comic strip uh, special uh, movie that they did back in 72-73 which had Popeye and Olive and Wimpy crossing over with the likes of Hagar, crossing over with Beetle Bailey, Blondie and Dagwood, you name it. And they were all basically tricked into this cruise, um, if you will. They were tricked into this cruise, uh, or going on this cruise, I should say, to an island by this man that basically, as the title says, hated laughter because of some reason. Well, mainly because he tried to win an award several times over, and he was laughed at several times and, and everything. He just hated, and it just got him to hate laughter. But it's an interesting special, so I check. I would check it out if I was you, if I, if you want to do that. But yeah, these are some of those rarities that I talked about. Then up next here, um, I got some of these to I think I offer. And like I said, some of these you can actually find on the YouTube pages that they currently have, and even the Facebook group pages. Here we have Pink Panther and Sons. Uh, there was act, yeah, there was actually a series just like Popeye and Sons later on in the early to mid '80s or mid to late '80s, I should say. They did this around the early to mid '80s as well. They did their own interpretation of that, where they had Pink Panther and Sons. Oh, yeah. well, sorry about that. Uh, interruption there. Um, anyway, though, like I said, um, Popeye and Sons was something that they did back in the mid to late um, 80s on CBS, and then around before that, they decided to do something similar uh, before that, like in the early to mid 80s, called Pink Panther and Sons, and the Sons' names, as I was trying to explain before the interruption there, the Sons' names were Pinky and Panky. Pinky was the uh, oldest and Panky, I think, was the youngest. And they hang around with this gang uh, of, ki of other fellow young cats. And they're called the Rainbow Panthers. The group's called the Rainbow Panthers because all different colored uh, panther kids. 
and I think one of them, I think, I think the uh, one of them, I think her name is Tabitha, I think, is kind of like, gets portrayed as maybe the love interest for Pinky, if you know what I mean, you know, Panky, one, I, I think it's Pinky, yeah. Uh, so, uh, they did that series, and, um, basically, uh, basically, like I said, they did that series, and it ran for a couple of seasons, I think two seasons, and, unfortunately, it's not gotten any physical official release yet, but you can, like I said, find it on the YouTube, official YouTube, uh, Pink Panther page, you can find it there, and even download it from there if you want to. But yeah, it actually comprises, this is, again, I bought this off, um, I think, I offer before it went down. Uh, and this is basically, and now you have other uh, places like Collector's Haven and all that that's stepping up. But here you have on I, I got this off I offer, and these are basically four discs that comprise of the entire series. So this is, I think, both seasons, I believe, that comprise of both of the, all the episodes, I should say which is pretty cool and it kind of gives you an idea now I'm pretty sure these were done um, let me see these were done maybe yeah I think these may have been done um, in the two and a half hour mark so basically it, like I said it's the entire series and uh, there are some DVD softwares or Blu-ray software softwares that you let you do more let you add on more and everything so we're looking at the, the entire series here, we thought it was one or two seasons, and it, like I said, it gives you an idea of officially what you know this would look like um, if they decided to, you know, the people that own Pink Panther decided to officially put it out on DVD in the future. But yeah, I bought this because the song is pretty good. The intro song is actually uh, really nice, um, if you will. So here we have disc three, disc two, you know, disc one, and then disc disc four. The only thing that the person didn't do with it is they didn't list off the episodes, but you can see the episode names, I think, on the menu, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, Pink Panther and Sons, again, it's a rarity that you can find on the YouTube page, but physically, uh, media-wise, has yet to get like an official uh, release um, as we speak. Then next up, we have a lot here, um, if you will. We have a lot more here. So, let's see what we got here. New Yogi Bear Show. Yeah, I think that's about it. I don't think I'm missing anything. Yeah, I don't think I'm missing anything here. So we're going to start off with this one. Uh, with these two, actually. Um, if I can... Try to... Hold on, let me figure this all out here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Some of these are a lot longer than the other ones. So here, we're going to start off with something that I'm pretty sure, since you can watch it on Boomerang right now because it's divided in seasons, we have the new Yogi Bear show. Now this came out around, uh, basically, this came out around, like I said, the mid to late 80s. And it was all new specials. I think this this here was what inspired the Yogi Bear, Yogi Bear and the Invasion of the Spa or Yogi and the Invasion of the Space Bears Superstar 10 series, along with the other ones. But I think this is the one that mostly did it because this came out after those two uh, movies, which were Magical Spruce Goose and uh, Yogi's Great Escape. These came on afterwards, and they do have Cindy in there, and there are some episodes where she's focused on and everything, which is pretty cool. And like I said, this is what led to the, um, I think, the creation of Invasion of the Space Bears. Because when you watch Space Bears and you watch this, it basically feels like it's a movie adaptation of the new Yogi Bear show. As well as it feels like a natural sequel to the, um, to the Hey There, Yogi Bear 1964 uh, movie, uh, in my opinion. So... Yeah, I got these as well. I'm surprised, like I said, Warner Brothers has yet to put this um, on DVD, even through the uh, MOD service, Movies on Demand service. But maybe if I look again, it might be there, but we'll see. Uh, next up, we have... Uh, well, speaking of Yogi, we're going to get to this next one last. But speaking of Yogi, we have 
Yo Yogi, which again you can find on uh, the book. Sorry about that interruption. My mom wanted me to show you some, show me something. But like I said, this is on the uh, Boomerang streaming service, and again, just like with the new Yogi Bear show, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't gotten no physical release yet, uh, DVD wise, uh, or even Blu-ray wise, uh, here in the here in the U.S. by Warner Brothers, even through the movie on demand service. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting series. Basically, it's the last of what was known as the kidified. You know, it's, it's the last of the kidified um, versions of the established characters. Of course, they had Flintstone kids, pup named Scooby-Doo, and, of course, Tom and Jerry kids, and then they had Yo-Yogi. Yo-Yogi, unfortunately, didn't get enough opportunity to really shine because it came on, it debuted at a time when NBC, the network it was on, was slowly transitioning from uh, basically an all animated Saturday morning block to more teen oriented and then later news oriented. But yeah, this is the entire series here on two discs and it kind of gives you an idea of exactly how many discs potentially officially these would be on if Warner Brothers decided to do that. But yeah, that's another rarity that I'm surprised Warner Brothers hasn't taken advantage of as well as with this one since they do own the Ruby Spears Library I'm kind of surprised they haven't done this one yet. And it's Goldie Gold and Action Jack. This came out in the early to mid 80's. Um, and it focuses on the title characters. She, Goldie Gold is basically, she's a mystery solving entrepreneur. She's a rich and everything, but she likes to, you know, go on adventures, explore stuff and, and everything. So, you know, she and she has a compadre with so called Action Jack. And you know, they go on these adventures for news and all that, so it's pretty cool to see. And these are three discs, so it kinda gives you an idea of exactly, you know, how many discs uh they would be on uh, essentially if you know Warner Brothers decided to officially put them out. Maybe they have, but mostly these along with the ones I just showed you would be um like this is a handful of, uh, if I can just get this up here right now for a second before I get interrupted again. There we go. This right here is a handful of potentially what would be MOD releases, uh, if you know what I mean. Now, as we, uh, I don't want to zoom in, to zoom out a little bit more. Now we're going to get into the other stuff as well. And the first one up on the block, because again, I'm surprised it doesn't have a release physically. I mean, I know the series has like two volumes so far, and I have those two volumes. I'm just surprised they haven't done more. Hopefully they will. And I hear there's a reboot coming. At least they're going to reboot the series and kind of start out the way they originally started back 41 years ago. But this is something that, again, I'm surprised they haven't put onto DVD yet officially of any kind and we're talking about the raccoons and the lost star now I know there could be um, other places that probably in, like in Canada that have it this is released in 84 I believe 83 84 and then I added the run with us music video on there because of course that incorporate that would the run with us music video was actually uh, um, uh, incorporated or uh, based on the Lost Star because it has scenes in there uh, during the video with Los Lisa Lohan in her group. You know, so anyway, this was a special that came out. It was an hour-long special. Uh, you would probably consider this to be like a weekend ABC weekend morning or a week uh, ABC weekend special or a CBS Story Break. So um, special. So yeah, there you go. It's just a little cover I made. I made on my own. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's a nice little cover I made on my own. So yeah, but that's a rarity that I'm surprised has not been officially released. Then next up, we have something that, you know, as I said before, individually this would never get released by Disney, but I'm surprised it 
you know, but I'm surprised Disney hasn't taken the opportunity to at least on Disney Plus, you know, single it out as a movie along with things like To the Rescue and, and all that. We're talking the Plunder and Lightning Uncut uh, Pilot. This was the uncut two hour uh, pilot. It's the uncut pilot. It has the um, home is where your heart is um, sequence in there, uh, which was cut out unfortunately during the original, um, during the uh, during the uh, basically the five part miniseries cycle, if you will, basically the ep episodic uh, cycle, if you will. You know the sixty five episodic cycle. They cut that out when they were rerun the the pilot in miniseries format, but it is here uncut. Someone actually, from what I remember, there is various tales been fan sites, and one of the fan sites had the uncut version of the pilot, which was pretty cool. So, yeah, I was able to download it and put it onto DVD, and I gave a copy to Zara Nizarak as well. So, again, it's another rarity that. You know, even though you could watch it on Disney Plus and you know as a five-part miniseries, I'm surprised they haven't put it uncut. So, you know, I wish they would do that along with everybody else because honestly, that sequence, that song sequence, is one of the best. If you don't believe me, go ask anybody that grew up with the series; they will tell you that. All right, next up, we have something that. Again, I'm surprised Warner Brothers has not released. I mean, they have the license to the... They have the animated distributing license for the series. Uh, even though uh, the toys are owned by Hasbro, they own the rights to the animated series. And even though this was distributed originally by Paramount back in the day, and, you know, Zara Nizrak even has the original VHS... I'm surprised they haven't done an MOD or official release of this on DVD or even Blu-ray. And we're talking about Bluebot's Battle of the Rock Lords. This came out uh, basically around the same time Transformers the Movie did. I think about a year or so later, I believe. Let me, let me check. Yeah, it was actually the same year. I thought it was about a year or so later. But they say it's 1986, same year as a Transformers the Movie. And I think this came out before Transformers the Movie. And it was basically an introductory film to the Rock Lords line that uh, Tonka was trying to um, sell and trying to spin off into their own thing. So they decided to use the GoBots as sort of a... Um, as sort of basically a foundation, a launching pad for the Rock Lords line. And again, this was found on YouTube, I believe. I think it was on YouTube I found this on. And everything, so there you go, right there. I gave it a PG rating, even though the original rating was G. I gave it a PG rating. But yeah, it's one of those situations to where, like I said, I'm kind of surprised um, Warner Brothers um, hasn't You know, hasn't uh, officially released this in any format, um, if you will. So, yeah, there you go. It's another rarity. And then right here, we have Sonic the Hedgehog, the Doomsday Project movie. Of course, I've talked about this before. This is basically the final four episodes edited together of the movie. Long story short, I took... Uh, basically the other episodes cut out all their title cards if you will and the only title card you get is the Doomsday Project which comes on before 
outcry of the wolf. So I make it feel like it. So it makes it feel like it's seamless. And a bit of history, as I've talked before, and I even did myself another version of it right here as a backup. Uh, but as I've mentioned before, uh, basically I did this several times and kind of screwed up a little bit, didn't really get it the way I wanted until finally one day I was just very carefully, and I think this was, I think this was with my Sony DVD recorder, uh, the one I have in the living room. I very carefully, you know, paused and unpaused during certain moments. Like I said, when the title card, the intro and the title card would come up for an episode, I wouldn't have those except for the beginning, for Doomsday, and then very carefully I would pause and, you know, pause at the instant it faded out and the moment it faded into, let's say, an episode like Cry of the Wolf or something. So yeah, this here to me is a movie that I felt, like I said before, that ABC missed out on broadcasting as a full-length feature, or at least, you know, having the episodes air weekly every Friday night during primetime to a wider audience. If they had done that, in my opinion, I think the the, the thing would have last the show would have gotten its uh, third season on ABC. All right, next up, here we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of the shells tour. This is something I think you can find on YouTube without any problem. This was distributed on VHS by Good Times Home Video. This was at a time when the Ninja Turtles were actually doing a live band. Yes, they had a live band. And this apparently was shown on pay-per-view. I remember, I remember getting the VHS. I still have the VHS somewhere. I just got to find it. But yeah, it was done in 1990. They did a promotional with Pizza Hut where you would get the CD. I, I mean, not CD, but the cassette, which I originally had. Um, unfortunately, it's destroyed. But I do have the songs on Spotify and, you know, physical media. CDs, that is. But yeah, this was something that they did as a TV special, pay-per-view special, to promote it. And this was at the height of the Ninja Turtles. And if you want more context of, you know, how people felt about it, just check out Angry Video Game Nerd James Rolfe, as well as Nostalgia Critic Doug Walker, and they'll collab together on uh, this special, um, if you will. So that's pretty cool. And again, surprised that Nickelodeon hasn't, you know, decided to release this on DVD. I think they would really sell it out very well. It'd be cheesy, but it'd be the kind of cheesy that would sell well. Alright, next up we have another rarity that in some market, well at least it's a rarity here in the U.S. I think in some markets it's gotten a DVD release. We have The Invisible Kid. Now, as I've talked about before, uh, I first found out about this movie when I was living with my dad. Um, basically 11 years after it initially came out. It was one of those independent films uh, that was released that didn't get much of a, you know, wide release, if you will. It has uh, Jay Underwood in there, along with China Phillips, uh, Wilson Phillips fame, and Karen Black. And basically it's a nice little uh, comedy, teen comedy rant I have two copies in here, believe it or not, of the film, just in case, just like I do with uh, Ninja Turtles. So, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, because you never know what will happen. Uh, but basically, like I said, this came out in 88. It was released by, it was distributed from by Trimark originally. Um... And again, I'm kind of surprised that international, that U.S.-wise, it hasn't gotten like a release on DVD or Blu-ray. You would think maybe a company like Mill Creek might take a, a shot at that, if you will. If not, maybe Scream Factory would take a shot at that, uh, at distributing this, if you will. And basically, it deals with what it says. You know, Jay, Jay Underwood plays a kid that turns invisible because he find he was able to actually create and you know, make a reality his father's invisibility formula. And he tries it out along with his friend. You know, they have some mischiefy fun, gets the shenanigans. Uh, China Phillips, who is the love, who plays the love interest, the girl next door, but the love interest to Jay Underwood's character, she tries it, does her little invisible strip tease, if you will, in the film. Um, so yeah, it's, it's actually a good, so, and, and of course, Karen Black gets an opportunity as, as well, because she's suspicious that her son's up to something, but she doesn't know what. 
and when she does kind of discover what it could be she uh you know she's kind of shocked and surprised but more but i think she accepts it more because she realizes this is what her husband was working on and overall it's a nice little cheesy film that if you want something to watch you know just to buy the time for its cheese you know and just you know for its ridiculousness and all that this would do it and it was actually pretty good the effects were actually decent for something like this of low that was i think done on a lower budget uh, than I think people want to let know. But yeah, I'm surprised that here in the U.S. at least it hasn't gotten a DVD or Blu-ray release. And like I said, you think someone like Mill Creek or even Shout Factory, Scream Factory would take a shot at it. And last but not least, before we get into the other series, we have Mighty Mouse and the great she in the great space chase yes this is actually and again i sent most of these i sent copies to uh to zero nizarak some of them anyway um my name and the mighty mouse is one of them but the great space chase was uh basically a uh, a compilation of a lot of serial shorts on the original mighty mouse show back uh in the 70s and early 80s that Filmation, who was behind that version of Mighty Mouse, decided to, you know, put them together for a theatrical release, and you know, and see how fair, well that would fare. Obviously, it didn't fare very well, but it was it fared just enough to where it would get matinee releases, uh, kid matinee releases, like do when they would do those summer movies uh, for kids. Even they even still do it today. Uh, but when they would do those summer kid releases, they would take something like this and put it on the big screen to, you know, for parents to take the kids to, to enjoy. Um, but yeah, this came out, I think, in the eight nineteen yeah, 1982, it says. Because that's when I was able to find out when its release was. Uh, but basically, like I said, it's a compilation of a lot of serials that basically had a continuous uh, plot that they decided to edit together as a movie. And believe it or not, this wouldn't be the first time. I'm the and believe. Well, I should not say the first time. Um, this is actually one of the first times they would do it, but it's not the last time because, of course, as we know, Secret of the Sword with uh, He-Man and She-Ra, which introduced She-Ra, I should say, uh, was another way, another five-part miniseries that got combined together as a movie uh, before that. But yeah, this is another rarity that. I'm surprised whoever owns, I think if this is the Filmation one, I'm surprised Universal hasn't put on the DVD or Blu-ray yet because I think they would actually make a lot of money out of it. So, yeah, we have uh, Great Mouse, Mighty Mouse, and the Great Space Case. And then, last but not least, let's talk about some television series here that, you know, I'm kind of surprised one of them at least has not got a physical release yet on DVD, even though you get bonus episodes on various other uh, Deke Entertainment releases uh, by End Circle and Mill Creek and all that. And of course I'm talking about The Get Along Gang. Yeah, The Get Along Gang student there was a series that was on CBS originally and of course it got uh, distributed in syndication, Disney Channel, uh, and all di syndication, Disney Channel, and, and all that. In fact, one of the last places it was on was PAX. That's right, P A X, uh, Pax, if you will. Um, the syndicated Christian station at that time was one of the last places that had it. So I was looking for it, and someone said, "Hey, you know, we have it," and I bought it. And this is three discs comprising of this entire uh, series. This is thirteen episodes of. The Get Along Gang, and I think, I think that might have been the right link. Let me check here. Let's see. Yeah, it was thirteen episodes. It's all thirteen episodes uh, on here. Now they tried to revive the Get Along Gang, um, I think about fi ten, 10 years ago, I think, ten, no, actually 10 years ago, but about 15 years ago, 
they tried to uh, revive it I think it was 15 to 16 years ago and it was supposed to be a new generation of get along gang members so basically they were going to carry basically it was a a group of characters that were very similar to the original group and uh, they were going to be mentored uh, by her and she was you gonna see and you actually got to see her in an older version of who she was so so yeah I was so yeah they actually tried to uh, revive this back like I said about 15 16 years ago uh, it was an all-new CGI series and uh, Portia I think that's what her name was Portia was going to be their mentor and like I said you got to see her as an older version of herself so you know she'd be able to tell the stories of the original get along gang and you can definitely tell it's you know far into the future because of technology that is used but yeah that's uh, the get along gang it's another thing I got off the I offer before they uh, went out and again I'm pretty sure you can find these through other places like collectors haven and then last but not least we have one that I'm surprised that I'm definitely sure is never going to officially get a release no matter uh, who who owns the rights to them or anything because of the fact that there's so much uh, so much copyrighted music in there you know that it would be a nightmare for them to license it I mean they could showcase this but they'd have to do uh, basically what uh, was done with like the Super Mario Brothers shows uh, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show and they'd have to either cut out certain things or they'd have to edit out certain music and all that or rearrange it uh, basically it'd be like I said it would be like Super Mario Brothers Super Show all over again when Shao Factory distributed it and then later on n distributed it and of course I'm talking about Kid Video which came out in the mid 80's at the height of MTV and basically the thing was uh, you had this group by the same name called Kid Video that got sucked into an animated world uh, by this villain by the antagonist known as the Master Blaster who wanted to make them his own personal band his own personal group his slaves if you will and uh, uh, basically they get uh, saved by a character uh, by the name of Glitter I think whose power, her secret power is she has to sneeze she has to get something to sneeze to give her super strength if you know what I mean in other words you put a little pepper on her nose she sneezes, boom she becomes super strong uh, but it was a unique series a very unique series, the animation style did change a little bit the original style was very similar to, um, you know, as some people would say, like Scooby-Doo-like characters. And then the following year, they got more anime-ish, if you will, in style um, uh, with the with the designs and everything. They basically gave them a, they basically gave them at the time, and this was something that ran all the way up to the early 2000s. They gave some, they gave them what was known at the time as a seasonal redesign. Like with Sonic the Hedgehog, Sat AM, you know, season one, you know, you look at Sally, she only had like blue eyes and, you know, no vest and anything. Come season two, you know, she's got pupil black pupils in her blue eyes, she's got a vest, you know, you know, you know, her skin her fur is a little darker, if you will. So yeah, they you know, they at times they would give shows a complete read of characters designs, I should say, a complete makeover or touch them up a little bit for the following seasons and sometimes that new design would stick and that's what they did here with the characters of Kid Video like this here is the original uh, design of the characters and then up here is the newer design um, if you will if you can see that right here is the new like again like I said this is the original design and this is the newer design up here Let's see, uh, zoom that out a little bit. There you go. But like I said, this is the newer design. This is the uh, first season design, second season design. So, anyway, Kid Video, like I said, is one of those situations to where you would think, you know, it's a no-brainer to put it on, you know, DVD and Blu-ray or streaming, and it would sell. It would sell. It would get viewed. But the unfortunateness, like I said, is because uh, is the 
it's due to the fact that there's too much licensed music you know inside of there too much licensed music not just played during the episodes but the videos of certain songs as well that would get showcased uh, because kid video was actually utilized not just as a Saturday morning series uh, with a plot if you will in there but it also served as a way of getting some of the more established music videos of some of the more up-and-coming or established artists at that time over with a non-cable audience at that time because cable was still kind of new and MTV was one of the first channels to really get into that cable phenomenon but because of the fact it was still new and MTV was like part of that cable package where which nobody which not a lot of people could have afford they decided to basically NBC decided with Deacon Detainment and all that hey we could make an answer to that with kid video so that during the episodes you would get music videos. You would get snippets, if you will, of music videos, so not the entire music video, uh, to play or to watch. So you get an idea of what you would possibly get if you got, let's say, MTV. So that's what Kids Video's purpose was. And again, it did have a, a plot at times. One of the last episodes actually, one of the last episodes actually, um, I think it was one of the last ones. Yeah, it was one of the last ones. Uh, because it was so weird. I mean, Rob the Wonderful did a cartoon clip show on this. It was so weird that you didn't know what was going on. Like, he, he even acknowledged that the characters in the show were like, we, you know, you know, the characters. I mean, Rob basically said in his review that even uh, he felt that the characters in the show themselves were like, you know, were like dumbfounded about how crazy the places they would go to would get or how, play, how crazy things were getting at, at that time. So, yeah, it was one of those situations to where they were just in a world of abstractness and wonderland kind of, you know, inspirated, um, like, you know, <laughs> environments, Pepperland, like, if you will, if, if you watch Yellow Submarine. And one of the last episodes to prove this um, actually had Carly and uh, the other guy who was the drummer get turned into plants. And Carly actually got turned into a plant to the point that all she was was just like a flower with a face on it and she was completely silent like she just became the plant now and then the other guy was still fighting for it to keep his humanity in things that was one of the last episodes they even had an episode where they had uh, Izzy I think that was his name yeah believe it or not there was a male character named um, Izzy along with Carly get babyfied and Glitter had to watch them because, you know, their minds were now babied. You know, were babyfied and everything. But, like I said, unfortunately, yeah, but, but like I said, besides that, uh, the show's main purpose with the plot that it had, if you kind of look at it that way, was to kind of be like a foundation, kind of be like a, a way of showcasing uh, music videos that normally you would find on MTV or music you would hear on the radio. Uh, to kind of get it over more, to get people invested at that time. And this is the entire series. As you can tell, it's spawned over four discs. Um, basically, that's all the episodes spawned over four discs, if you will. If we can just get them. There we go. Spawned over four discs. And uh, unfortunately, like I said, it's one of those situations to where... Um, it's one of those disc or one of those series that will never really truly get a chance to be released officially um, by Wild Brain, who owns the rights to them now, and you know through Wild Brain and Circle and all that, because of as I said the copyrighted music. Not now the music videos and the songs done by the Kid Video Band themselves, which was actually consisted of all these characters, including Robbie R Rist here, Robbie Rist here, who did the voice of Michelangelo um, in the Ninja Turtle movies, as well as was the Oliver character in the Brady Bunch. Um, basically, you know, with the exception of their video, except with the exception of their music videos and their songs that are utilized um, in there, anything else would have to be cut out, or they'd have to, you know, painstakingly add in something like, let's say, from the Kid Video Band 
you know, into the middle of the um, of the of the episode. That's what they would have to do because every episode would end with a music video by Kid Video by the Kid Video band. So what they would probably have to do to get this out there officially is take out any of the music videos that were in there, like. Um, like they had Janet Jackson in there, they had Lionel Richie in there, they had, uh, what was the other one, Wong Chong in there. They would have to take out those snippets of music videos and replace them with snippets of the music video that would come out later on by Kid Video. That would be the only way, in my opinion, that they could do this. It could be the only way that they can do it. Um, but until they figure that out, unfortunately we'll never see an official release of this. Um, but if we were to see it, like I said, I think Zara Nizarak basically said it best in his recent closer look at the Mario Brothers uh, DVDs, mostly the Super Mario Brother one, or the Super Mario Brothers Super Show one, that if we were to get a release, it would be basically butchered to hell. It would basically be butchered to hell to where the music would be different, segments would be cut out, and it just wouldn't make in. And if you would have watched the episode, it probably wouldn't make any sense as to you know what just happened kind of deal. Um, anyway, though, this is one of those rarities, like I said, that, you know, probably will never see the light of day. So, yeah, kid video. So, with that said, though, these are, as I gather them together, some of the rarital exceptions of movies and shows that some would have a chance and some that don't have a chance at a physical an official physical release or streaming release if you know what I mean so uh, so it's kinda good to have them and everything like I said you know you have a lot of these here as well so again just kinda cool to have them about, about so so yeah I hope you uh, so yeah maybe someday you know things might change maybe we will get something like Goldie Golden Action Jack as an MOD uh, through Warner Brothers, who knows? But yeah, that's about it for this closer look at what I consider some rarities here um, in my collection. Rarities that again, you there's a possibility of happening and not a possibility of happening due to you know other reasons and stuff, legal reasons, licensing reasons and stuff. But just thought I'd come on here and do that again. Here, you have basically, if they were to work it out, let me take that one out, if they were to, you know, realize it, you know, Warner Brothers here has basically, you know, six disc, I think, oh, not six disc, um, eight, let's see, two, two, and then three, it's like four, five, they got nine discs here, nine discs that they could actually put onto MOD DVD if they wanted to. And then the people that own the Pink Panther thing, yeah, you can get these on YouTube, but you could also find them. But I guarantee you, if they would have released them on physical media, they would sell. There's no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, these are just one of those, like I said, these are just rarities, um, if you will. Uh, I try to gather that together without it spilling but these are just like I said rarities that again some of them have a chance like raccoons and lost star I think has a chance pulling the lightning uncut I don't think has a chance you can only see see that as a on the um, as part of as basically as the five-part miniseries run on Disney plus go about to the battle of rock lords I think would have a chance you know they just decided to go MLD with them this of course, you know, you have to come to your own conclusion, but unfortunately, but if I'm in Circle and I'm Sega, I would definitely consider doing an official release of the final four episodes as a movie. Coming out of the shells, I think Nickelodeon could probably get something out of that if they wanted to, but who knows. Invisible Kid, I think that's something that Mill Creek or Screen Factory or Shout Factory could look into. Um... Just checking something. Like I said, uh, the Great uh, Mighty Mouse and the Great Space Chase, I think, is something that could potentially get a DVD release if 
uh, Filmation decides to release the original Filmation, oh not Filmation, but Universal decides to release the original Filmation run. Get Along Gang, I think, has a good chance from End Circle. And I'm, I think they've had some releases already, but an official complete release set, I think they still have a chance. Give Video, though, at the end, is one of those that, you know, unfortunately will never have a chance unless they work out licensing issues and all that. But, um, you know, that's all I'm going to say on this uh, Closer Look video, guys. And again, shout out to Zero Nitrac for inspiring me to do this. And that's all I'm going to say. Take care. Like the video, guys. Comment down below. Comment during the live chat during the premiere. And I am out.